what is mezcal? I don't really know, but let's find out today while we try one of the most popular brands out there. And we're also gonna try it in an original cocktail called The Ashes of an Affair. So today is our Valentine's Day episode. We're gonna do a Valentine's Day drink I created when we try three different mezcals. For those people who are unfamiliar, what is a mezcal, Riley? Mezcal is an any agave based spirit. Okay. Tequila. Right. Is a mezcal. Okay. But not all mezcals are tequila. Made in Oaxaca, Mexico, it's usually smoky. Does not have to be made from the Weber blue agave like tequila does. Gotcha. So any species of agave is free game. Okay. With mezcals. If I remember correctly, it's the distilling process that gives mezcal its unique flavor profile of smokiness. Kind of like how scotch, some scotches have specific smokiness flavors and yes. smells to it. So I think, in my kind of humble opinion, mezcal might be the new up and coming kind of trendy thing. Because yeah. at my job, more people are like, ooh, you have mezcal, they're kind of like, getting interested in checking what it's about because yes, it's smoky like scotch, but it still tastes like tequila. So it's just smoky tequila kind of gives it a little more depth and flavor. So we'll see. I mean, it's, I know it's super popular, but here in at least Iowa, let's yeah. put it that way. It's up and coming in Iowa for sure. It's been yeah. becoming more popular, I think over the past five to 10 years. Yep. So what we did was we picked out probably the most popular brand for us here in Iowa is Del Maguey. They have a very popular bottle, the Vita, that everyone's probably pretty familiar with. They've yep. seen it in restaurants, bars, and if they have one mezcal, this is probably the one that we got. Yep. Uh, that bottle is about $32 and comes in about what? 42% ABV, I believe. And what's kind of unique about Del Maguey, they have different farmers spread through throughout these little villages in Oaxaca that they are in charge of certain expressions, expressions right. of the mezcal. Yes, so each mezcal is, each one of their expressions is named after the village yep. where the agave is grown and where it's produced, which is really dope in it my is. opinion. They support the local farmers from all, from what I understand. It seems really cool. Yep, and on the website, each farmer, they give a little history about that person and then each variety of mezcal. So the website, we'll put the link in the description to their website. You can definitely check it out because there's a lot of great information about it. The what bottles are, are good, reason, good reading too. Right, three, these are the three that are available to us in our area that we were able to find. You're going to find that these two have the same name but what's different about these two? The ABV at which they are distilled. So the Vida de San Luis del Rio is probably their most popular expression. It is also probably their most inexpensive expression. Maguey Vida de San Luis del Rio Vida de Muertos is um, for the celebration of Dia de los Muertos. It comes in at 45 ABV. A little bit of extra special version of this one. Right, and then the third bottle? The third bottle is the Chichicapa, okay. which is the village in Pueblo where it is, where the agave grown, where it's where it comes from. And this one comes in at a whopping 48%. Should we start with the original, obviously, yep. right? Low yeah. ABV first. Let's start with what, what we're familiar with. It's always fun drinking mezcal at 10.30 in the morning too. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like it's such a just, when you open the bottle, it's just a sweet, it's just got a nice, sweet, smoky smell. Just when you open the bottle, the cap, yeah. it just comes right off and you're like, oh. It is very much like scotch where you can smell it immediately and mm -hmm. you know exactly what it is. Yep. The smoke's not super intense. It, I nope. mean, it is it is very, very potent present. and present, yep. but it's not like you're putting your face in smoke. It's just right. a very thick kind of smoky kind of smell. Yeah. It's very roasty. Roasty. I guess that's exactly what I'm thinking of. It does smell sweet. A I mean, bit pepper a little bit. Yeah. So the, the agave characteristics are very present mm. also. Green isn't the right word, but green. Smooth, doesn't have a big ethanol burn to it. I mean, there's a little bit in the back end, but it's kind of bright actually. It is very bright. A, an extremely big contradiction because it is bright and also smoky. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I do feel like I'm chewing on a piece of burnt wood. Kind of, yeah. But like, I'm not mad about it. Right, because there's a sweetness level from the agave that's kind of like helping that yep. be, not acceptable, but I guess acceptable. Palatable? Palatable, yeah. Yeah, I like it, it's good. Um, I mean, there's probably a reason why this is one of the more popular ones because it is a little bit more probably approachable to some of yes. other mezcals. Because like, we've had some mezcals that are just like, holy wow. Yes, and I've had some mezcals. It's, some of them are come off vinegar, vinegary to me, yeah. like the EVL. It's yeah. good in certain things, but it's very, it comes off vinegar, vinegary to me. That might just be my palate, but this one is very friendly and mm -hmm. and pleasant and exactly what you would hope it would yeah. be. And we're very new to mezcal. Like, I mean, we kind of had it throughout the years in cocktails and stuff like that. We've never taken it seriously to where like, right. we've owned now seven bottles around here of mezcals, different yep. mezcals. And so like, we're learning ourselves as we're learning with you guys about more about it. So yeah. it's very interesting. So, all right, so now again, we're gonna do the 
different version of the Vita, where it's 45% and made in a different village. It's, it's made in the same village, just same in a different way. Yes, that's correct, sorry. Okay, so it does have a completely different smell. Yes, it is not as campfirey. I feel like I get a little bit more pepper. More pepper, yeah. Almost got a little bit more vegetation, kind of some nature yeah. into it, you know? A little bit greener. There's something very familiar and distinct on the nose that like... It's almost like rubbing alcohol, kind of. There's no. a rub, you know, I think there is. I'm still... Like cilantro. Oh, okay. Yep, yep. Or I coriander. See. Coriander, yeah. But bright green veg, like the, yeah, the, the veg, yeah. Yeah. Wow, it's completely different. Yeah. It is not that smoky. There is smokiness to it. Yep. But you know, almost the the verde. There's certain like aspects of that yeah, like verde. Like the poblano pepper. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah. That is very smooth. Mm -hmm. It is just completely different than the first one. Like I said, there's a little bit of smokiness, but it is not present that much at all. Right. Like it's it's there enough, but like I feel like this one is the Vita, like the the traditional Vita, but just with all of the edges rounded out, and then a little bit of oomph packed right. into it. It's bright and it's happy making. Mm -hmm. Like I don't, yeah. I really can't ex describe it any other way. I can see how they would serve different purposes in different cocktails, mm -hmm. but either of them would be fine on a rock. Okay, so after taking that last sip of of the second one, it's almost like kind of like. A light cigar smoke. Yes. Yes. More than a Came burning wood. wood. Yeah. yeah. Ready to try the third one? I mean, I don't know if I can handle like another, what should be theoretically uh, an, a level up. Right. Because we went from 32 to $47 and this one's 70. Where we got it at, it was 70, 72, but we got it on sale for 60. And the ABV on this one is what again? 48. 48, okay. So just a little higher, just all incrementally a little higher, but again, just enough to like, hopefully one day we'll be able to try their more expensive line, see what that is. Man, so I, if you're interested in that, make sure you subscribe for more content and like and share with your friends. I want to make it my mission to do with this line what we did with the plantation line. Oh, do all of them together? Yeah. <laughs> I would also love to do that with Louie. All right, ready to right. smell this? Oh wow, red, Ooh. like almost like red pepper that you kind of cook with. Yeah, like the red peppercorns. Mm -hmm. I mean flakes, but yeah. Oh, red pepper flakes. Mm -hmm. This is also extremely bright. Mm -hmm. A little bit less smoky. Yeah. Like I don't really get much roasty or smoky on the nose. Mm -hmm. I have a feeling though the taste is gonna have. It's gonna pack a wallop. It's kind of still got the vegetation, the coriander, you know, yeah. the pepper, but no. But I do smell like some red pepper flakes. Yeah, this is more, I would tend to say herbal. Herbal. Than vegetal. All right, let's go ahead. Right Ooh. Ooh. That's really sweet. It's very sweet, but like in the best way possible. Right, in the best way possible. And then it's got the slow burn on mm -hmm. the finish. Like the smoke lingers. I think out of all three of these, this is the sipping one. I, you yeah. can sip on all three of them right. easily, but I think this one, over time, it just has the best flavor profile of just yes. like kind of keeping your palate interested. Yep, and it feels like it would build. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's sweet. Not like I said, overly sweet, but it's just way sweeter than these two. And it's very citrusy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's got some bright like lemon. Yeah. I don't think, maybe some orange, but I think mostly mm -hmm. lemony. More, yeah. This one's really good. Mm -hmm. And then just lingering in your mouth, the palate just kind of sitting there and you're just kind of yeah. like still expanding what it was doing. Right, your mouth is tingling from the alcohol burn, but it's hidden by the smoky flavor. Mm -hmm. So you don't really feel the ethanol. Right. You feel yeah, it doesn't smoke. Really, it doesn't really have an ethanol burn at all. It kind of does a very good job of like, hey, even though I'm 48%, yeah. I still taste really nice. Yeah, the, uh, the, the alcohol burn is in a mask and the mask is the smoky flavor. Yep, I like it a lot. That is wild. Man, it's been a while since I really liked all three bottles that we had. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do now is make the cocktail Ashes in a Fair. So the original cocktail I created, it's basically a mezcal sour with a raspberry syrup. Riley's gonna blind taste test and see if she can tell the difference. I'm actually kind of excited about it because it's each drink is this is gonna, they should be completely different. The differences are gonna be massive. Massive, so. In that's my guess, though. Yes, right. And then sometimes I say that, and, <laughs> and it totally exactly blows it up. So here we go. Here's how to make an ashes of an affair.
right, so we have this cocktail here. It's got a nice light pink rosé. It is very pretty. Look to it, and obviously with the egg white. Welcome back, buddy. Mm -hmm. So the raspberry syrup, I went in ahead and used Anders, one of our buddies' recipe. The link in the description to his syrup. He's got four awesome syrups on that episode, so I just used his. It was really easy to make, not a lot of work into it. Let's go ahead and give this a try, so. All right, I will start with the honeycomb. Okay. God, this is so pretty. Mm -hmm. Ooh. So essentially, what is this? Is a sour base? It's a sour. We tried variations. Her and I sat one day and tried many variations of this cocktail. We went full ounce and a half mezcal. That was a little too much. And we split it with the reposado, which gave it a nice flavor. Mm -hmm. Then we added the agave nectar, which enhances obviously the mezcal and the tequila. Not too much raspberry syrup because I don't want that to be the star of the cocktail, but I just want to add a little bit of depth to it, right. sweetness to it, besides the agave. So that is very nice. Mm -hmm. Not too smoky. Correct. And I think that's more to say about what mezcal was used versus the cocktail itself. Yep. Um, it's, we shall see, shouldn't yeah, we? Yeah. It's sweet. It's not extremely sour. Right. So I feel like this is going to have like a broad appeal for I people. I believe so too, yeah. And I'm one of those bartenders, I'm not going to make chocolate martinis for Valentine's Day. So, I mean, if you ask for one, yes, I'll make it, but I'm not going to create one. Look at him just begging you to pay him. Oh. <laughs> that one's a lot smokier, but very, very good. Okay. This one, I think the agave pulls through more. Yeah. This one, the smoke. Through. I think this one on the back end is a little more sour too. Yep. I kind of gives you that like, ooh, I've been eating a couple Jolly Ranchers or... Yep, it's got the... This one has more levels. Mm -hmm. This one is more round. Right. Okay. And that one splits the difference. <laughs> <laughs> I think that one's my favorite. I don't know. It's good. I think I like the second one. I kind of like the sourness it gives you. Yeah. I think these are all three really good. They are very good. If I made either one of these, any three of these at a bar, I think everyone would like it. Right. Just the downfall is if using the, uh, we use the chichicapa at a bar, it'd be a $15 cocktail in Iowa. Minimum. Minimum. So yeah. besides that, if you have it at home, make this cocktail, but the other ones would be a normally priced cocktail. I think you're right, right? Like this one's probably the more for any casual drinker that yes. doesn't know much about sours or mezcal. This would be a good entry level one. For yep, this one. yep. That's what it, I agree. Now to the fun part. The part where Riley could be throwing off her winning streak. This is why everyone tunes in. To see if Carl or Riley will, will talk themselves out of what they already know the answer is. Or talk them into the answer. That one went the wrong way. Well, she's gonna go ahead and guess. I'm going with, yeah, I'm going with the chichicapa for this one because it was very citrusy. Okay. And the smoke wasn't as upfront. Sure. This one also may be just minutely more boozy. Okay. Which I taste on the front. I get that. There's, it seems like there's a little bit more heat. Just, just a nudge, but like enough to maybe be a thing. Okay. Now the hard part. Okay. Trying those three completely wrecked anything I had going on in my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> now they taste completely different. Try it. It's fun. It's wild. This one had steps and level and was the smokiest. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think. More of the charred embers. Okay. Which I remember with the. Vito de San Luis del Rio. Okay. And by default, and because this one was smokier <laughs> than this one, but feels slightly boozier than this one. Sure. The Vito de Muerto. Watkins in? Yeah. Are you sure? No. Did I get him? Yep, you got him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it, the way you explain it is exactly how we sampled it, and it's like 
that actually related to the cocktails, exactly how they tasted. Yeah, and wow, these all are very distinctly different, and yeah. sometimes that can lend me to a little bit of overconfidence mm -hmm. because you can it's put- It's so obvious that- You can put the ingredients together and then they, it just skews everything yeah. the opposite of what it could be. I think though with these though, these are so different in taste. Yeah. That it would be really weird for them to like not kind of keep that same flavor profile. Right. But then adding the agave sure. could mask a lot of things. Could. Why we do these, right? To show you like how crazy things can actually happen when you add different things to the spirit, mixers yes. and purees and syrups and whatnot. I really like this cocktail, you know, I just wanted a sour that kind of had a tequila spirit with some smokiness in it. Yep. Um, but I definitely think all three of these bottles are worth getting. Do you need all three at the same time? Obviously not buy what is available to you and in your comfort zone for price wise because yep. they're all gonna be really good. Yes, and you can definitely uh, drop some money on mezcals. You, it can it can go fast. As far as a Valentine's Day cocktail goes, this is light, refreshing, sweet, very, very pretty. Yeah. I think this is a perfect Valentine's Day cocktail. I really do, you did good. Thanks, love. Good try. It's, it's so pretty. <laughs> it is really pretty, especially with the white uh, head on it from the egg white. Yeah. You know, if you found this content really fun, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and like and share it with your friends who might not know what mezcal is or might be interested in a new cocktail. Yeah. Go ahead and check out our episode that we did with Yonjo. It was a fun time having them down here. We did some local bourbons and it was a good time. Till next episode, guys. Cheers. Thanks.